What's going on, everyone? This is uh, a weekly Zoom hangout, uh, breaking down AM's upcoming opponent with someone who knows them well. That's uh, Steve Virgen from, uh, well, wh- why don't I let you go ahead and announce or, or tell everyone where you're from and where they can follow you and, and see your work, Steve? Yeah, I'm on Twitter. My handle is Steve Virgin. Um, I work for the Albuquerque Mall. I've been covering the Lobos football team for the past four seasons. My, this is the fourth season covering them. And I'm also the assistant sports editor of Albuquerque Journal, ABQJ, abqjournal.com sports. There you, there you go. Um, so this will take, for those of you who are expecting a weekly My Aggie Nation podcast as well, this will take the place of this as we set the stage for um, an A&M in New Mexico this week. And Steve, let's just start out with what are the biggest headlines for the Lobos uh, heading into this game? And uh, what are, the, what are your, you excited to see or, or expecting to see from, from the Lobos this weekend? Um, well, the coach told me not to make too much of it, but the penalties from, from this game is a pretty big headline. The penalties over 100 yards, um, a few of them more personal fouls. And I wouldn't say that's the big headline, but I guess the big line is, you know, they're, they're very excited for the biggest game of their season. They start out against uh, two teams, they lead that they could win, and they won 2-0. And, um, you know, this is a big game for them as far as uh, – the season goes as far as progress goes. Um, it's all been a process for them to be improved and much improved from last season. The end of last season, winning their final two games and a lot of momentum into this game. And, um, you know, they don't really want to say this is like a test for them or where they're at in the season. It is part of the process of where they're trying to be and they're one of the best teams in the Mass Conference. Steve, I'm kind of interested, uh, you know, Terry Wilson came here before with Kentucky. How was uh, the Lobos able to help, able to land Wilson, and how much do you feel he's added to the program? Oh, he's, he's had a lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, maturity. He's already been established himself as a leader of the team. Um, he's gotten really comfortable with the offense. And um, I think he's made the team believe that they can win and that they expect to win. Um, it may not seem like that's a big deal, but uh, around here for this couple of years, it's been, you know, expecting to lose in a way, you know, look that way. And as far as him being able to, or the Lobos being able to a quarterback like that, I think when he went to transfer portal, um, Terry wanted to find a place where he can showcase his skills and throw a little bit more. And um, I think that was one of the, one of the um, selling points they had when we recruited them. And offensive coordinator at Wareheim, his father, uh, coached Terry in school in Oklahoma. So there was a connection there as well. And they were able to, to land a, a transfer quack with um, a lot of expense and a lot of experience in big games. How, how, go ahead, Cease. Interesting. Interesting. What do you think about one up against the same defense? I know you were quite the press conference. We was talking yesterday about how good this defense is. What about Wilson in that passing game? Do you think they'll be able to have any kind of success here Saturday? As far as as far as success goes, you know, I do I do believe they will be able to make some plays. It's all dependent on the offensive line, you know, going against a defensive line like the St. M's, it's gonna be quite the challenge. But I you do see some playmakers that get some plays in Saturday's game. Um, it's on the other side of the ball that's uh, concerning. But um, as far as offense goes, um, we'll see, you know, but I do, these past couple of games, they've gotten to hot starts, fast starts, and I'm expecting the same. We'll see. What, how much was uh, in the press conference was talked about Wilson's experience at uh, A&M before when he was at Kentucky and they played here uh, and, and how much was the conversation that he can bring that and he, he's, he's been here and done that before. Yeah, it, it was about a lot actually, you know in the press conference and very talks to reporters um, every, every day as well. And he's, he's kind of made other players leave, believe that they can win like this, or even, you know, contend for a win, you know, in a big time college out there. And um, he's made them believe because he's, he's backed it up. He's been in big games like this. He won at Florida with Kentucky and, as far as uh, leadership goes, where it comes in, so they believe him. 
Definitely. Uh, I know another big part about what New Mexico has been able to do and have success comes in the kick return game. Um, what are the weapons they have there? And, and uh, is that something that, that was expected with this team this season or has come as a little bit of a surprise? I would say it's come kind of a bit of a because Manny Lingree wasn't used in the game um, last year or the year before um, as much. Uh, he's, he's kind of Uh, he's a big one in the cut return game. He almost took back a return last week. He took it back 58, I believe, and he was he was is is the hiccup on my end or is that I'm not hearing him either right now. Okay. Hey Steve, I think we uh we we, we, we you froze up on us a little bit. Not sure if uh you can hear us or not doesn't look like the connection's great yeah oh there he goes wow that was fun that was quick <laughs> well if somebody had been on time it would have been he'd have had three more minutes okay that... okay <laughs> there we go there we go yeah we Oh, wait, maybe frozen again. Steve? You there, Steve? Yeah. We're cutting in and out a little bit. Just pause the recording and... All right, everyone. Sorry, we experienced a little technical difficulties, but we have Steve back here on the on the phone line for us. And Steve, we'll just start back kind of where we cut out there before we uh, had some of the technical difficulties. And that is talking about the the kick return game for New Mexico. Was it as much or was it a uh, they've been successful this year? Was that something you expected with this team or was did it come as a little bit of a surprise? It, it came as a surprise to me. Yeah, it was, it was unexpected. But uh, they found it looks like they found a. Uh a key guy as far as the return game goes and Manny Logan green. And uh, he didn't do that much as, as far as returning last year, but um, he's really stepped it up this year and he's, he's fifth in the nation in all purpose yards. And uh, he almost took back a punt return for a touchdown last week against uh, New Mexico state. He was about a couple of feet away from just breaking it all the way, but he took, he took about 58 yards and he's definitely a threat when it comes to kick return, punt return. He's also a receiver. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of stepped it up as far as uh, special teams goes. Mm -hmm. I know uh, when we talk about Wilson, too, going back to him a little bit, um, he, he's a guy that can throw it and can run it. A&M has had some struggles with quarterbacks that could run the ball so far in their first two games. How much of a threat is, has his legs to, um, to, to, uh, to, to, to Wilson and what he's been able to do and have success this season? You know, in these past couple of games, when he takes off, it, it's been on design plays. And I haven't seen him use his legs when he needs to or when he has to as far as a pass rush goes. So we'll see how that goes. But he's, de he's definitely a threat when it comes to running. And um, he's, he's, he's broken a couple of big runs these past two games. And uh, I think it, it, it's opened up the offense. It really has. And um, it just makes these uh, playmakers that they do have more viable and more, more of a threat as well. But he, he definitely can, um, can take off when he needs to. Steve, we, we talked about how, uh, you know, Terry Wilson ha had played at Kyle Field before uh, when, they, when, when he was at Kentucky. You know, New Mexico played at A&M back in 2017. Are there any other guys on the New Mexico roster, maybe some fifth-year seniors or older guys that made that trip to College Station and have any recollection of that game? Oh, I have to go back. I would only think there might be one. What year was that again? 2017. 2017. Yeah, I think I think there might be one. And Corey Hightower, he's a starting defensive back, plays corner, and um, he's he's had a couple of redshirt years and got the extra COVID year, so he, he did. I'm pretty sure he was at that game, but he might have been a redshirt back then. <laughs> yeah. What was uh so so in general in covering the team this year, what is what has kind of been the expectation for the Lobos from not only the fa the, the players and the coaches but the fans uh for for what 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 would be a successful season a successful mark for this program? Oh, good question. You know, I think uh, last year they they 
end of the season win their last two games. So I guess expectations were just to kind of continue off that momentum and um, surprise some people in the Mountain West. You know, they're picked last to be in the Mountain West. Picked last in the Mountain West. And um, I think fans or people that follow the team, they are expecting an improvement market, like significant improvement from last year. And like I said, it was only two games that they won last year in their seven-game season. But and then with Terry Terry Wilson being on the team, they're expect, expecting the offense to be more explosive, the defense to be farther along than it was last last season. Um, with defensive coordinator Rocky Long, they're expecting a lot as far as that goes. And um, you know, a lot of people believe they can they can surprise people in the Mountain West and contain contend for games. You know, when I looked at their roster coming into the season, I was kind of impressed um especially with uh getting 14 seniors back because of the extra year of eligibility i think that was a big help for that team for the team and for um to get transfers like uh terry wilson that's also um picked up the team as far as um their belief that they can win games and you know i think i think they do have a chance to surprise some people in the mountain west they're going to definitely I think they're going to be in games. and They're not going to be um, getting blown out in um, Mountain West games, but we'll see, you know. For sure. Well, Steve, I, I, I guess one question is, you know, what are some things that New Mexico is going to have to do in order to, you know, be competitive against A&M and give itself a shot at, at pulling an upset? Mm. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> going to take a lot you know i mean this is a very i mean ranked number seven in the nation you know i don't tell you guys they're, they're, they're just a really great team i think uh i think they're gonna have to what they what they've done these past two games i know it's against teams that they were supposed to win game win the games but um these past two games they really got out to a hot start and i think uh it's something that they really focus on i know a lot of teams do anyway but it seems like their first uh you know, five, ten plays or so on offense are scripted. And, you know, I think uh, I think that's that's been very important for them these past two games. I think it's going to be important for them every game. But for them, yeah, for them to even have a chance, I think they do have to get out to a fast start and maintain it. Um, definitely have to create some turnovers. And I think a, a rocky long defense, which is this is, you know, 3-3-5, three, three, has has been known to cause turnovers and I, I they definitely have to cause some turnovers and stay away from injuries. I think, you know, win or lose, that's it, a really key thing is to stay away from injuries because of uh, the Mountain West being such an important part of the season. Yeah, I think, and before, to close it out here, uh, we, we talked a lot about Wilson and the offense and you mentioned the defense there. Uh, who are some of the standouts on the defensive side of the ball and some guys that, that probably might hear their name called a few times uh, in Kyle Field this weekend? Now, along the defensive line, they, they have a leader and a uh, well, quiet leader, but he, he definitely a playmaker in Joey Noble. Um, one of those seniors I'm talking about that got the extra year. Um, a little bit undersized, but he's very fast. He, he tends to make plays and um, uh, as well as a pass rush. Uh, as far as a linebacker goes, uh, another uh, another senior with the extra year is Devin Sanders. And um, they look to him for, you know, leadership now because he's, that that lead, that linebacking core is kind of inexperienced, and he's he's probably the only one. He is the only one that has um, noteworthy experience. And the secondary, Tavian Combs is their leader. Actually, he's only a sophomore, but he's uh, he's grown up quick, leads the team in tackles, and um, he's he's made he's made a ton of plays in these past two games. And um, yeah, you know, like you said, I think that that that's a name that would be called uh, during the game on Saturday. For sure. For sure. Well, Steve, thank you so much for uh, taking some time for us today. Um, be sure to check out Steve's stuff heading into the big game this weekend, and we'll have more coverage on the Eagle and uh, the Eagle.com for uh, the game this weekend.